Hello, I'm John Kettlehut and I make natural blue lotus organic red wine and my first batch was around 2012 and I have some reviews on that although I put the blue lotus in the bottle uh, when I made it and that was the blue lotus stamens this year 2016 uh, I'm making it with um, fortification due to some spoilage I had received um, during a racking I had bottle shock and it did come back but it took out my Zinvidel which is I think more sensitive in the cellar I think the highest temperature my cellar gets is 74 when it's a hundred degrees out you know so um, the temperature that your cellar or your holding conditions could be your house you know that's probably the best place for it a cool closet uh, it's steady and that's what it needs is steady temperature I think uh, I entered mine in a bottle shot competition which I should never have done because they didn't realize uh, that it was natural wine um, and I think they put it in the refrigerator or a cool space and then they didn't let it aerate after they opened it and they didn't decant you know so it needs decanting it's been in the bottle since 2013 so it was three years in the bottle and uh, I had it evaluated just two months prior to that competition and it, it was fine and I drank it too and it was fine and then the competition there was some some uh, words of that it was uh, Oxid, oxidized and I know it wasn't the color isn't brown and um, what had happened is the CO2 started building up in it it became alive again the yeast came alive so um, you know I aerated it for three weeks and it finally came back to neutral but still I think uh, that something happened in the cellar that it got maybe a little warm, 74 is maybe a little bit too high, so I'm going to have to try to work on getting it cooler, but, you know, I looked at a lot of grappa, and grappa is must, and uh, the leftover after pressing, I press by hand, and I um, I don't de-stem, I just crush with my feet, leaving in, uh, leave it in the fermenter hole with the stem, and either between about 10 12 days and then I press by hand I get the much as free run as I can and then this year I'm steaming the grapes for my grappa and then adding uh, Everclear and the blue lotus with that so I'm going to show you my process that I did this year Hi, this is Blue Lotus Organic Red Wine 2016 batch. I'm showing you here how to make it without any money or very little money and no preservatives or anything like that. So that one there is five gallons, about 100 pounds from Sutter Creek. And I'm doing another 100 pounds right now. And I'm showing you how to do that through just a press, my own press, into a five gallon bucket. And then I put the must in a Misa Lisa, which is a steamer. And so I'm catching all the must into this pan, and I'll show you how to steam the grappa. So I'm steaming the must to get the rest of the juice out and pressing it. Because there are grapes in here, like. Oh, uh, well, let me see. I'll find you a grape. Like right here. This grape isn't pressed. Oops. That grape isn't pressed. I just got it out of the barrel. And this has been sitting. What I did is, uh, you know, the old-fashioned way when I got the grapes home, I picked them individually by tasting each one to make sure that it was the right flavor profile and sweet enough. And then I smashed it with my feet in the barrel. So it came up to about, oh... I don't know maybe about up to here all the grapes and when I smashed it down it went down to about this level and then it's been you know fermenting for uh, let me see it's a th um, Tuesday it's been fermenting for 12 days so uh, the last one fermented 
for uh, 10 days and how you could tell is the the wine cap will drop and then you get like a puddle like that on the top and that's this juice right there and then I put it into the strainer and I strain it all out it's pretty easy so I'll show you how to do that and so basically I got this big brute garbage can clean it really well there's my other one that I had and um, I have that five gallons so that was a hundred pounds this other five gallons that was a hundred pounds from a different uh, farm or vineyard in Valley Springs that's east of Lodi and that one I have blue lotus in it and uh, backed with some fortification of Everclear so I put about uh, there's my blue lotus right there and then I put about this much Everclear in it just a little bit just to up the alcohol content and it kills any bacteria or uh, stops the it basically stops the fermentation process and it helps settle because this stuff has a lot of Zimbadel has a lot of uh, impurities in it but um, I'll show you how to steam uh, after I plug in my computer that's it okay I'm coming up to finishing you know scooping this wine out of here so what I'm trying to do is just get all the free run as I can so basically I'm just doing it one little pitcher at a time but um, it's getting up to a point now that it's getting full and um, this is a hundred pounds so I hand press it so I'm getting about uh, 20 pounds of grapes for one gallon and it fills up this and then what I do is I steam this grappa down for my backup uh, to, after the sediment settles then I put my grappa on top but right now what I'm going to show you is putting my blue lotus so this is the blue lotus I get mine at uh, mood mind and it's all natural no chemicals in it and this is my moonshine that I back it up with so this together uh, actually it releases the alcohol releases the uh, the chemical which is called ama ama morphine into the alcohol and the alcohol uh, as you can see on this bottle the alcohol stays on top with the stamens and separate so it's something new that I'm trying versus what I had done in the past was just use the blue lotus and the uh, uh, wine at bottling but here and I, I don't you know count it out but I counted out maybe about three stamens uh, per per bottle and there's two cases 24 bottles in there so I'm gonna grab a pinch full like about like that you know this is about as much as I want to go not too much just about like that maybe a little bit less yeah something like that drop it right on there so I, I put the stamens right on top. Now this is 77% alcohol. That's 77% alcohol, so I didn't put a whole lot. Not like I'm making port wine or anything else. I'm fortifying it, which isn't really going to add too much to it. Not in the way of alcohol content, anyway. So, what I'm doing is getting all the free run back into it. And then I'm going to show you next how to steam how to steam grappa so this is what I'm doing now 
And yeah, it might be tedious, but you know, I don't have a hand press. I don't have a de-stemmer. Those are all stems. Um, I don't even have a press. And it's, you know, that's 100, 200, 300 pounds of grapes. And then I did a small run, about 35 pounds of another old vine. So I just do old vines in Vidal. And uh, these vines are, let me see, Valley Springs. That was... Uh, well, that was about a uh, hundred pounds. Let me see. Um, no, I'm kind of confused. Um, Valley Springs is a hundred pounds, and then two hundred pounds from Sutter Creek. Oh well. Anyway, um, what I do is I uh, pick the grapes from the owner. And then I make some wine and I give them a quarter back of finished product. So it might be, um, you know, out of a bottle, five gallon bottle, I give them a quarter back. So about a gallon and a half or, you know, seven, eight bottles, whatever, of finished wine. So that's how I make free wine. And then I'll show you the, um, the steamed grapes nobody's doing this there's no, nobody steaming grappa they're uh, just pressing it and then putting it through their own distiller it's called a pot distiller but I steam mine to get the juice out and then I fortify it with my moonshine which is called Everclear okay I'll be right back with you on steaming the grapes Here's the must I got from outside at the fermenter. And I look at this, I gotta I put a temperature probe on there. I don't know if you can see it. It's 212 degrees, so it's steam. Steaming if you've never seen one of these before. They're on Craigslist or not Craigslist. I bought this one for $29 on Craigslist. So I do a lot of shopping on Craigslist. This is grappa. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put the lid on it. if you use a cool pack it condenses the water on top so the, all the moisture and everything goes right down back through the grapes so I put two gel packs on it just to keep it cool and now I'm going to let that go drain back down to here And so this is the finished last run outside and I just put it in here and so this is my backup you know like when I rack racking you know is getting the sediments off the bottom and I'll be doing that probably about a month or so maybe two anyway here's some shine with or Everclear with some blue lotus stamens in it and I'll just put that just to kind of what I say fortify it a little bit because what I'm doing here is natural way of preserving the wine for a long period of time because I have a 2012 batch that just this last month two months ago turned south and not south so much as all the CO2 built up in it and I had to let it aerate for uh, you know uh, this is it right here for three weeks so I'll show you what it looks like the color is great um, if I can get a clear glass um, this glass has a yellow bottom to it but I'll just show you here you can see that it has a good color um, and maybe if I pour it in the sink too. <laughs> so 
so the blue lotus does keep its color that is uh petite sorrel mixed with uh Zinbidel, but i decided to change up and not do petite sorrel even though i really think it's great but i like what i have done this year with the 2016 Zinbidel. i picked and i don't use meters or anything but this is uh, one vineyardist he said that next door they picked and they're a commercial vineyard so he has part of their old vines on his property so uh, i went and picked behind them and i only got second pickings and so i got a very small amount and um yeah that would be uh this i got a gallon of it and i put my own cork in it so this has already been fermented this has no blue lotus in it or any fortification so This is Sutter Creek Grappa right here. This is from the process that I'm doing right now. And um, I got some stamens in the top. I don't know if you can see it. But you don't need a whole lot of blue lotus stamens. It gives it an herb flavor, herbaceous. They call it herbaceous. Um, so I'm going to continue with that. And um, I don't know if I poured any in here yet. I don't think I did, did I? I might have to show you. So, okay. So I just poured a little bit of this in it. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. Oh, no. <laughs> but anyway, uh, that's to preserve it and uh, to kill the yeast from fermenting because it doesn't have any CO2 in it. I just you know from punching it down over the last 12 days um, and I'm adding that I'm not even putting the airlock on it or anything so it's basically ready to drink but it does have a little bit of a tannin kind of a stem flavor so I'll just wait on it and uh, give it some time and uh, so that's how to make wine for free one make a deal with the vineyardist or small backyard vines that's what I look for I look on Craigslist or anywhere else word of mouth or brewing and sometimes you know other larger grape vineyards know somebody that does a lot of smaller vineyards and so it's a lot of hunting and pecking but I only do old vine uh, due to the nature of trying to get uh, sweeter grapes, smaller grapes, distressed grapes. Uh, so I don't go for the big fat juicy ones. Um, this last batch I went for half of half of uh, 24 bricks and the other half at 22 bricks. At least that's what she told me, 24 and a half and 22. So it seemed like I had a cherry vanilla kind of flavoring at the 22 bricks and then at the 24 i just got a leathery little bit of leather and uh the other one uh the 36 year old vine it was at a higher bricks and i got a wood smoke flavor from it uh, kind of peppery uh, smoke and so you know every vineyard is different every soil is different and how they grow it but I try to get them to uh, grow organic and that's how who I look for so I give them a quarter back of finished wine and I get free bottles to uh, cork with and I store it in my cellar and um, so the only thing I'm really putting out money for is those carboys the five gallon carboys I bought those off Craigslist for twenty dollars a piece and those one gallon jugs for two dollars I think they were for two dollars a piece and then I made up my own corks from the hardware store my own bubblers you know going into a uh, just a, my own airlock just the hose coming off into a, a little uh, water container in case it's degassing anything else so pretty much I did half uh, my or probably I would say three quarters of what I made this year is Blue Lotus um, and the other 
I'm leaving not so just a combination of you know testing it over the years and seeing what happens how it comes out okay that's it